guys, my name is Ronke Adikonvi, aka Auntie Roro, your most impressive storyteller. I love to write, I love to speak amongst many other things. And it's Thursday, one of my favorite days of the week, yes. I run two different sessions on Thursdays, Storytelling Basics and Story Time. Last week was Storytelling Basics and today is Story Time. So sit back, relax and enjoy. Drinsky, Drinsky, how far now? It's been a while. Thank you, my man. I heard your wife just had a baby. Congratulations. Sounds of plastic clinking gave away the fact that the guys have decided to celebrate the birth of the new baby with a toast. While I sat on my stool at Dave's garden bar, sipping my very cold iced tea, honestly, considering the fact that I grew up in the Asian city of Ibadu, the idea that tea can be iced or cold seemed ludicrous. Well, I decided the world is already a strange place where feet smell and noses run. I sighed. Conversations between old friends flattered with my subconscious, all fleeting. Nothing stayed. Beginning to get really concerned, I checked my watch for what seemed like the 27th time. There were still no signs of Taddy. Hmm. I would give him 10 more minutes, and if he didn't appear, Karen would have to accept that our son prefers to know for far than get a job. Everyone kind of knew that already. By 8.30, my nephew sauntered into the bar with two of his trifling friends for want of better description. Friend one wore what looked like a jeans jacket over a tailor job gone wrong knicker. In fact, if there was ever anything called anything called short knicker, that was it. The color of his shoes were muddy brown, but I suspected they were initially leaf green. The only thing worse than his ensemble was the foolish grin he wore as he stretched forth his hand to shake me. I didn't even bother to hide my disdain for his gutter dirty fingers. Friend too, a lady, almost wore a black dress, or was it a t-shirt, but she forgot to wear a skirt or something. I wasn't entirely sure. The dress looked like it was rescued from the mouth of a Rottweiler, and I helped. I've never seen any sane person wear hair like that. Is this a signature statement? Something that came with being upwardly mobile? Meet Day and Yo-Yo. You look good. Hmm. I look good. So you know what it means when somebody looks good. Then why have you and your cohort constantly decided to dress like a cross between a clown and a moron? Is it your intention to embarrass the entire family? But auntie, auntie what? Somebody clearly needed to set the guy straight. You come in here over an hour late for a meeting. You didn't even have the decency to apologize. Instead, you arrive with two clowns. Day and yo-yo, really? Why don't we rechristen them day and night? Oh, I forgot. They have already been rechristened. There is no way those are their real names. Auntie, I, I apologize if I cost. If you cost, cost what really? Your mom's constant headache, a constant worry. You UK work permit application that was rejected. Your mom having anything to do with your never do well father. I have not gone on leave from work for the past six months. My boss is constantly breathing down my neck. The whole country is upside down and you just made it worse. Yes, you cost. You see, by the time I was done, I had no breath. Apparently, I had become the entertainment for Drinsky and his celebration mob. I had their full attention. The bar attendant walked towards me, supposing that I was drunk. Madam, are you alright? My phone immediately began to ring. It was Karen. You see, I was in no state to pick a call. Besides, Karen had always been the more emotional person and I clearly was not in any state to hold fragile hands. I I'm sorry, I turned to the bar attendant. I didn't quite hear your apology for daring to intrude on a conversation that doesn't even concern you. I, I, yes, you. Have you? Then I heard, Justina. Oh, thank goodness the kids have gotten to you. Karen rushed into the bar and was all over Taddy mumbling. I'm glad you're fine. I'm glad you were there. I rolled my eyes. I understood what Karen was talking about. She was glad that I was there to babysit her son as usual. What have I done to deserve such entitled family members? Why do I have to be there? Why can't they be there for me? Where were they when I began dating Titus? When I met him at the poolside on my 27th birthday, he promised me heaven on earth. There was this time he invited me on a boat cruise. I turned down the invite. 
because it was it clashed with my friend's wedding, Moni's wedding. Titus offers, offered to pick me up with a chopper at Idimu near Egbeda. Hmm. Maybe I should have taken him up on that offer. I imagine what the area boys would have demanded as a ransom in exchange for the chopper. Maybe he would have begged. No. Titus was not a beggar. Forgetful, yes. But I knew from the day I met him, Titus, tight that he wasn't a beggar. Titus is a banker with Guarantee Trust Bank, one of the leading banks in Nigeria. The day, the that day, we had dinner at Bogobiri Place in Ikoi. Rice, shrimps, shredded chicken, wine flowed freely. I took a sip after I confirmed that the alcohol, alcohol level was less than 2%. Actually, it was zero percent. The after party ended at eleven thirty, just enough time for me to get back to Surulere before midnight. Waiters were already hovering around us to drop the bill. I suspected they hoped we would give them tips. Well, I don't give tips, but then even if I did, I wasn't paying. So Titus might just be into tip paying, into tips paying. After all, opposites attract. M M Justina Titus began. Can you pick this up? Pick what up? I don't see anything on the floor. I meant, can you pay the bill this time? I forgot my wallet at home. Hey, this time, dude, this has been the only time. Hope you are not mixing us up. After a long look at the bouncers who were edging closer as the drama unfolded, I transferred the 28,500 naira. Thank God, money just gave me some money to keep. I will settle her as soon as uncle remembers to pay my money, I decided. I, ah, besides, I was already three years share of my 30th birthday. Ah, I must marry before 30, oh, I cannot shout. Titus told me he was 33 years old when we met, but I'm sure he was no younger than 83. I knew this because he never remembered to leave his house with the wallet, with his wallet. On Valentine's Day, he called that I should get a gift for myself because he forgot to get me one. He said it so sweetly that it was only after he ended the call that he occurred to me that I was supposed to use my money. My relationship with Titus lasted for two years. In the two years, we exchanged, we had 15 dates, 10 gift exchange and 5 surprise parties, including my own surprise proposal party, all fully funded by me, except one, the one party that led to our breakup. He wanted me to sponsor his sister's 30th birthday. It didn't even help that I had no idea who his sister was. It is over, he announced over the day. What is over, my dear? I asked. This relationship, I calmly caught, I calmly caught the line and sobbed my heart out. Two years wasted, money wasted, money consoled me. You have paid to learn a big lesson, it she told me. The only way the money and time is wasted is if you make the same mistake a second time. I agreed with her, but here I am. Five years later, I'm still there. Same plot, different characters. Knowing Tade, he had gotten into trouble as always. His mom had promised him that he can count on his auntie Justina to get him out. Guess what fam, I'm no longer there. In fact, why am I still here, I thought to myself. I carried my hand back and headed for the door. Karen will pay for my ICC. She can consider that as my payment for babysitting little Tadi and day and day. Then my phone rang. Hello, I snapped. Hello, Auntie J. It was Tadi. Ah, uh -uh. Tadi, where are you? Auntie J, I should be asking you that. I have been standing in front of your gate for the past two hours. I sent you a message last night and requested that we should move the meeting to your house. I remember the conversation. Tadi was correct. But wait, Tadi was here today. With those two clowns, they are there. You. And Karen. Oh no. Then I realized that I had been sitting at the bar all by myself. Every single event that seemed real for the past 60 minutes happened in my head. Wow. But don't be so judgmental of me. Aren't we all like Auntie J? So what happened at David's bar that day, that night, might be a bit extreme. When it is scaled down, aren't we all like that? Jumping to conclusion on the matter without giving the other person a fear hearing. Based, basing our conclusion on past knowledge, people change, you know, and maybe they don't. But then, how do we know that our initial conclusion of them is not even premised on unfair judgment? Auntie J, are you okay? Oh, yes, I am. Can we reschedule? 
to next Saturday. I need to attend to something tonight. That's fine, Auntie. I looked up to where Drinsky and his friends were. I marched straight to their table and checked if I could join them. Every milestone should be celebrated. I need to celebrate the fact that I will begin to look at my nephew differently. Oh, this is probably the most complicated story I have said in a long time. I hope you were able to follow through with my strategy. And see you next week with another episode of Storytelling Basics. I love you.